What's up, guys? So if you're new to the YouTube channel or the podcast, my name is Gray Phelps, and I'm an emergency medicine physician assistant. Here at MedGeeks, we're extremely passionate about teaching and the advancement of the medical community. So with that said, today I want to teach you briefly about tetanus. Now, if you learn in any way similar to me, you probably hate memorizing long lists, and it's personally, I find it to be rather impractical. So pay close attention just for the next couple of minutes, and I'll teach you how to easily remember who needs to get a tetanus prophylaxis shot, and who does not need to get tetanus when they get injured. So quickly, why do we even administer tetanus immunizations in the first place? Well, since the spores of Clostridium tetany are found widely in the soil, and they're also found in the gut of mammals, it's virtually impossible to eradicate all these spores from the natural environment. So we can't get rid of them. So I want you to picture these spores of Clostridium tetany just hanging out there in the soil. They're waiting for you to walk around barefoot cut yourself, and then gain entry in to your skin through the damaged tissue. Once they gain entry, they can then travel to your spinal cord and brainstem by retrograde axonal transport, secrete a tetanus toxin, and produce an overall net result of increased muscle tone, painful spasms, and generalized autonomic instability. However, you need not to worry too much because almost all of the universal vaccinations that we've done in children with a tetanus toxoid the incidence of tetanus in the United States and other developed countries has dropped dramatically. For example, the CDC reported that there was only 233 cases of tetanus in the United States between 2001 and 2008. However, in undeveloped countries across the world, it's estimated that approximately 1 million cases of tetanus occur worldwide each year and they cause up to 300,000 to 500,000 deaths. So I think we're all on the same page here, guys, that we need to stay up to date on our tetanus vaccination. Although we do a good job at vaccinating our children, many adults are still commonly inadequately vaccinated against tetanus. For example, one serologic study done in the United States found that only 31% of adults over the age of 70 actually had fully protective anti-tetanus antibodies. This is of importance because individuals over the age of 65 are going to be at the highest risk for tetanus and tetanus-related death. So with that said, most of the patients who develop tetanus are not going to be completely vaccinated or they did not receive proper wound prophylaxis. And these are going to be even in the people who presented for medical treatment. So something's going wrong here, guys. We're dropping the ball and we're not properly prophylactically treating people against tetanus. So who is more likely to be incompletely vaccinated? Well, injection drug users, people in rural populations, immigrants, and older adults. So who needs to be vaccinated? Well, all children should be vaccinated for tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis with the DTaP vaccine five times before the age of seven. So they're going to have their first dose at two months, their second dose at four months, their third dose at six months, their fourth dose at 15 to 18 months, and their fifth dose between four years and six years of age. However, if you're like me, that's too much to remember. Just remember a child who is up to date on their vaccinations should already have five vaccinations with tetanus by the age of six. And then after that, they get an additional dose of tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis, this time referred to as the Tdap when they're between the ages of 11 and 12. So you're probably asking yourself, why is this important? Well, because any individual who's received less than three doses of a tetanus toxoid containing vaccine and they have a wound, tetanus immunization should be administered. Now, we're going to break this down into super simple, easy way to remember it. We're gonna break it down into clean minor wounds and then all other type of wounds. So in a patient who's had three prior doses of tetanus toxoid, containing vaccine, and they have a clean minor wound. They only need a tetanus containing vaccine if they haven't had one in the past 10 years. For example, let's say we have a 30 year old male who's had at least three prior doses of a tetanus containing vaccine as a child who cuts his finger on a clean kitchen knife. And now he has a one centimeter horizontal superficial laceration. He would only need a tetanus shot if he hasn't had a tetanus shot in the past 10 years. However, let's take this same 30-year-old male who's had three prior doses of a tetanus toxoid containing vaccine as a child, and now he cuts himself on a beer can that was laying in the dirt. Now, he would need to be updated if he hasn't had a tetanus shot in the last five years. So to review, anyone who has not had at least three tetanus shots as a child, or they aren't sure, 
when they get cut, they just need a tetanus shot, plain and simple. If they've had three tetanus shots containing vaccines as a child and they have a minor clean wound, they only need a tetanus shot if they haven't had one in the past 10 years. If they've had three tetanus shots as a child and have any other wound than a minor clean wound, I'll say that again, if they've had three tetanus shots as a child and they have any other wound than a minor clean wound, then they need a tetanus shot if they haven't had one in the past five years. This is because any other wound that is more severe than a minor clean wound, such as those wounds contaminated with dirt, feces, soil, saliva, crust injuries, burns, puncture wounds, or even frostbite, these type of wounds are at a higher risk for getting tetanus, and therefore they need a shot if they haven't had one in the past five years to ensure that they have appropriate levels of anti-tetanus antibodies. But you're probably asking yourself, what vaccine do I give? Well, keeping it very simple, in adults that are between the ages of 19 to 65, if they haven't received a vaccine containing pertussis once more since they were a child, you can go ahead and give them a Tdap, that's tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. Now let's say they got cut when they're 25, they're just accident prone and an overall klutz. And when they got cut when they were 25, they hadn't had a Tdap, so they got their first dose of a Tdap, which is tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. But now, they come back into your emergency room, family office, OBGYN, wherever you're practicing, and they're 31, and they got cut on a piece of metal that was sticking up from the ground. Well, this time, you're going to want to go ahead and just give them a tetanus diphtheria booster. That's a TD booster. So that was everything we're going to talk about today. Quick, easy, super simple. Just wanted to talk about it because it seemed like every single one of my patients today were either cutting themselves on purpose or accidentally getting cut with something. As always, if you have any questions, please email me at gray at physicianassistantboards.com. That's G-R-A-Y at physicianassistantboards. Until next time.